Southwest Transit, Light Rail Transit, and the Met Council have issues. Right now on Democratic Visions, here's Nancy Nelson. Hello friends, this is Nancy Nelson. Welcome to Democratic Visions. I'm so happy to be able to be here with you. Every time I drop in, I'm thrilled that we have such important conversations, really with the kind of information that you and I need so that we can make intelligent decisions and in fact, often get involved and try to be sure that the right thing happens. Well, a gentleman who is right at the forefront of trying to make the right thing happen is Len Simich. Len is the Chief Executive Officer, Chief Executive Officer. If I don't pronounce it correctly, do you get paid less? Uh, no, I hope not. <laughs> Chief Executive <laughs> Officer of Southwest Transit. Thank you, Len, for taking the time to be with us. Well, thank you, Nancy. It's a pleasure being here. There is so much to talk about when we talk about light rail. It is the future. However, we see that there's some controversy brewing, and it's almost as if there's a David and Goliath going on right now. Is Southwest Transit in danger of being eaten alive because of light rail? Well, we hope not, but it, it, it's certainly starting to appear that way. And so we do have some concerns. Uh, we're not against light rail. We're not against any form of transit because we really see that as a, as a positive for this region. But we have built up something that we think is very special, and we want to just make sure that we look out for the best interests of our cities that we represent as well as those customers we serve. I have been a frequent rider. It is clean, it is comfortable, it is efficient. You guys do a great job. Well, thank you, that's good to hear. And one of the things, because we have to defend that, believe it or not. Really? Uh, many times, many times. And it, it's not that what we do costs more money. It's all about effort. And I think one of my staff members said it best when we were just providing the, the state fair service that we just came out Which of. Which is brilliant. Well, thank Anybody you. Anybody who ever drives to the state fair has rocks in their head. <laughs> that service of yours is astonishing. Well, thank you. But we, we did get criticized by, by a passerby saying, well, of course, there's Eden Prairie. You guys put out benches, you have a tent. All those things don't cost money. It's just effort. We bring benches down from our station that we use all year round. To let people be comfortable while they're waiting exactly, for the bus. Exactly. So you exactly. get criticized for being a nice guy. Many times. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I hear it at, from various legislators that, well, that's, you know, those black buses are very expensive. Well, actually, the black paint and the white paint, it doesn't cost any different. And cleaning the bus, we use, we use high school kids. We, we realize our riding public has a lot of options. So what we do is you make sure you're reliable, you make sure you're clean, you make sure you're friendly. And, you know, that's the basics. And, but, but if you don't do that, you don't get them to ride very long. There are some people, of course, not yet served by Southwest Transit, and Carol Sundstrom has put together a videotape. We can take a look at that. Southwest Transit serves Chaska, Chanhassen, and Eden Prairie with commuter bus service to downtown Minneapolis, the University of Minnesota, and Southdale. The iconic black buses also take fans to and from the Twins and Vikings games and the Minnesota State Fair. When this system began 27 years ago, it was to meet the transit needs and exceed the transit needs of those that were lived here and needed to get downtown. That's been done really successfully, but it's also met its other objective and exceeded that objective of being part of the community. And being Southwest Transit is publicly owned. It operates under the oversight of a three-city joint powers commission. The Southwest Transit Station in Eden Prairie, the Chanhassen Transit Station, the Village Station, the East Creek Station, having each one of these in our communities, just as a, as a testimony, as a testimonial to the, the quality of the service and the maturity of the system. Your ridership is substantial. How many people ride Southwest Transit here? Well, we're over a million, a million two to be exact. Um, and that we've seen some, some incredible growths. Really up to 2008, we were seeing double digit ridership growths each year. Then the recession hit, things slowed up a little bit, but now we're starting to see the rebound. We have two new schools out west in the Chanhassen Chaska district, the new Highway 212. So we see this growth continually, both from a, a population standpoint, a household population, as well as businesses. Now, here's the deal. Light rail is coming west. 
you've been working to see to it that you guys can do this with some cooperation because if I understand Metro Transit is suggesting that as they come west they use your transit stations that Southwest has set up with their bus service. That is correct. The alignment is, is currently being discussed. Um, the alignment today shows Southwest Station as one of the major terminals in Eden Prairie. And we, and we said, you know, light rail, there's, there's both pros and cons as far as we're concerned in terms of Southwest Transit. And it really has some impacts on our communities west of Eden Prairie because a lot of our service, I would say the majority of our service flows through Southwest Station. The cities of Chanhassen and Chaska, they're very concerned about what this impact of light rail can do. And what we don't want to see happen and what our customers don't want to see happen is things like forced transfers where you have a full bus and you're forced to transfer it off at the rail. In the morning rush, for example, yes. most of our buses as they're heading into downtown or the University of Minnesota are, are pretty full. And what we don't want to see is you have, have a full bus and now when it gets to Eden Prairie, so if it comes out of one of those other points, Chanhassen or Chaska, mm -hmm. now it gets to the rail and you're forced to get everybody off the bus and now they have to find another seat on the train. Um, our customers do not want that. They Does that, that can happen? That it could happen. I'm not saying it would, it could. If you want to see something kill off transit, you start doing things like that. Again, you, you don't want to have to go fighting for another seat. Nope. And plus, when you get on the rail, while the rail has some nice advantages, it's going to be a longer trip. Is we, it? We know when you leave Eden Prairie to get to downtown, you're probably averaging 15 minutes or greater in travel time than what we currently do. So you're going to have a longer trip, and the amenities, while the rail, especially when it's new, it's going to be very nice, but we, we do. We take very good care of our equipment. Yes. It's a very comfortable ride, and when you're traveling 30 miles in one way, you want to make sure that ride is comfortable. Plus, we do other things, like on our buses, we've, we've installed now Wi-Fi, uh, very low cost, but now it gives people an opportunity to be productive I on, their, on their trip. I should say. And a lot of and some businesses, quite frankly, are taking advantage of it and paying their employees for the time they commute. We did a survey and over 80% of our customers said if they had, and we didn't even talk about time differential, we just said if you had the choice between the two, 80% said they're staying with us really? without knowing anything else. Well, and of course that simply speaks to the fact that you've taken such good care of them, which has been my experience when I have ridden Southwest Transit. It, does it have to be an either or? I mean, are you suggesting to us that if light rail comes, they're going to squeeze you guys out and it's goodbye Southwest Transit. Can't you work together? Have you tried to do that at all? You know, we can't. We, we see an opportunity to coexist. We really do. Um, but we have to have willing partners on both sides. Isn't there room for both kinds of transit, I guess, is there the is. question? There's there, room there for is. both. There is. I mean, you can design your system where during the peak hours we're, n we're not requiring forced transfers. And heck, we've even said that. We said, you know, during the midday, during the evening hours, weekends, We'll, we'd love to tie back and forth into that rail because what we can now do is provide more service with the same budget and, and have the long haul taken by the rail. So coexisting would be a good idea. It, yes. Have, has Southwest Transit reached out to Metro Transit at all? Well, it, again, Metro Transit is, is the service operator. And, and I will say the first thing, service operator to service operator, we have very few differences. I mean, we're all in the same boat. We work extremely well with one another. So it's the Metropolitan Council. We have we have a few issues when it comes to the Metropolitan Council, and and we did. We, my uh, our vice chair reached out to the Metropolitan Council saying, here's an opportunity where we can both coexist, but we need some assurances. We need to to make sure that we are going to be that local operator. We want to make sure our branding doesn't suffer. We want to make sure that the parking that we get the parking right. And, and that's always been a critical thing for us as we've developed like our Southwest station in Eden Prairie yes. and we have a lot of retail, we have condos, getting the parking right is important. It Not has only to for be us. very convenient. It has yeah, to be has, easy, but, especially but, in bad weather. Exactly. Yeah. But if we don't get the parking right, it spills over and then it has negative effects, whether you, you can't find a spot where you live or if you are a restaurant owner, people can't come into your restaurant because there's no place to park. And so these are just some simple things that my our vice chair went down to try to broker a deal. And there with just the was Metropolitan with the Metropolitan Council. Council chair, and there just really was no interest in doing anything. Do you know why? Is, um, I have my ideas why, but... Would I be putting words in your mouth if I suggested the Met Council sees what they're doing as so big that 
they can pretty much dictate all of the rules? That and, and control. You know, right now ah. our system is controlled locally. You know, we have a seven-member board, uh, elected officials from all three cities that make up Southwest Transit. We have a rider committee, which is made up of all riders, and anybody who rides can be on this committee. And we bring you know service plans, marketing ideas, all sorts of things through the rider committee, also through focus groups. Anytime we do various focus groups, which we do, whether it's university market, on technology, uh, with businesses, the rider rep leads that that charge. So what's the status now? In April, Southwest Transit reached out to the Metropolitan Council and said, how about if we try to do some coordinating? And Met Council said, mm, probably not. We did approach them in April. And th like I said, there were certain things that we wanted in terms of in exchange. And the exchange really is Southwest Station. That That's kind of the crown jewel here. That's the, the station in Eden Prairie that we have. It's a 22-acre transit-oriented development. We have 60,000 square feet of retail about 230 condo and apartment units, our station, and 1,000 stalls. So it is the jewel. And they would like access in. And we're saying, all right, for that access, we want something in return, whether it be another station along 169, a corridor that is underserved in the Eden Prairie market, uh, as I mentioned, the branding, mm -hmm. control of the localized services. So in a sense, yes, it's kind of a, a horse trade. To get access to Southwest Station, which they need us to sign off on, mm -hmm. that's what we were requiring. The city of Eden Prairie also, who has a big stake in our, our operations, they're on record saying, hey, we want to make sure we want light rail, but let's not throw out what we've had a good thing going for a number of years. Let's find a way to make it work for everybody. Which makes sense. Here's the situation. The project's engineers have been working with local cities, businesses, elected officials, and community leaders for more than a year, identifying track alignments and station locations. And from Eden Prairie to Minnetonka, Hopkins, and St. Louis Park to downtown Minneapolis. The eastern half of the Green Line will run from downtown Minneapolis to downtown St. Paul. Now that portion is expected to open next July, which would be July 2014. Well, all of this has not been fun. Cedar Lake and Kenwood residents do not want freight and light rail transit trains and a bike trail to run side by side through the rail corridor in their neighborhood. And St. Louis Park does not want freight train tracks relocated through residential and school areas to placate their Minneapolis neighbors. Well, each city that falls along the rail line that's impacted by the rail has to sign off giving their approval for the alignment and all the other nuances that go with putting a light rail in your city. At one time it was required or the project was dead in the water. It's a little bit gray now if that is the case, but the federal government, who's funding a big tab of this light rail, wants to look and say, all right, all the communities along the line agree with this. If they don't, there's a good possibility that the funding does not go through. Wow. Or, or the alignment could be stopped short of a certain area. Which requires everybody to play nice. Correct. It's a good idea, isn't it? I think it's a great idea. I mean, I suppose some could argue that it might be cumbersome. You never get five people in a room to agree on the same thing. And yet, this is something that impacts communities today and for decades to come. Exactly. And, and, and again, it, it's, it's never easy in this day and age to, to get a, a project like this off the ground. And I realize that. And you're always going to have the not in my backyard syndrome. And, and really, that's not the case here. The case here is let's make sure that we we don't just roll over Southwest Transit and put a rail line in there and now we don't have the services or options that our people are, are accustomed to. So let's find a way that we can both coexist. There's a lot of things that have gone on, again, behind the scenes mm -hmm. and one of it is cost. As we know what's happening in the, in the St. Louis Park and Minneapolis corridor and the costs continue to rise, there is some that believe maybe we don't go as far as the end of the line, and we're close to the end of the line. Maybe we stop it in the Golden Triangle area of, of Eden Prairie, which is the area that's bordered by Highway 212, 494, and 169. A lot of jobs in that triangle area. Or do we continue it on a little bit further, closer to where the, the Eden Prairie Mall and, and where the Eden Prairie um, is trying to create more of a, a, a downtown feel? So. Continuing as far as Southwest Station is, a, is not a given. If, well, if they came to the council meeting and said, you know what, we don't need Southwest Transit Station, we're going to do something else, 
would that be a, oh, gully or a sigh of relief for you? You know, I think it's a missed opportunity. Um, I think it's better than the alternative, which would be forcing their way in. Yes, of course. But I, I do think it might be a missed opportunity as well. So, you know, we're encouraging them to sit down and, and let's talk about it. What we did was we wanted to make sure we were, as an as a organization, that we are truly representing the three cities as well as one of the counties that has a lot at stake in our operation, which is Carver County. So we went forward to each of the city councils. Each of the three city councils and the county board passed resolutions of support of our position. So it's not just, it's not just Len Simich, it's not just my commission, but really all three cities as well as the county getting behind this effort. Well, and it seems appropriate because they are protecting their citizenry. You are the guys who provide transportation. It does not have to be a, we either have mass uh, light rail or we have buses. We can have both. Len, how important is certainly Southwest Transit, but mass transit in general? I think it's extremely important and is only going to continue down that track. We have to be looking at things more than in just one way. You look at a strong rail system, you look at a strong bus system, you look at a strong ADA, Americans with Disability type system that in this region we have Metro Mobility, which is a, an excellent organization. They're fabulous. They really are. Yeah. We have uh, van pooling. We have the coordination between the van pooling and the busing. And then there's, there's the biking. And you know all of our buses are equipped with bike racks. In fact, we've extended and we actually can put three bike racks on our buses. And we try to work together with all those various units. And that is the only way that, that this region is gonna be able to move forward because again, you've heard it over and over, you can't continue to build your way out of congestion. And that's not to say we can't build anymore either but it all has to work together. So October 6th is this um, uh, city council and it's the- This is the Metropolitan Council and that's- <gasps> Where is right, this taking place? This would be in St. Paul. And would that, you love it if we all came? Well, sure, but, but, but check, <laughs> pre check the date and time because this has moved a couple of times. I'm serious, does it matter if people come? Or oh, is these it? are all public meetings. These yeah, but does all... it matter if people come? I mean, does it matter at this point or not if people come and say, listen, I ride the bus and yeah, I want light rail, but you leave my bus alone. Does that matter at this point? I would like to say it does. Yeah? I don't know if it does, but I would like to, I, I'd hope it does. I, 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 I'll, I'll sum it up with one of my board members who, who actually has spoken out on this issue many times. And he says, you know, this organization has about 100 people, and the majority of them are drivers and mechanics. Um, and we, we have, have the, uh, the, the unionized shop in terms of the drivers. We have about 25 high school and, and early college kids that clean the bus, cut the grass, clean the buildings. We have a lot of people that have bought into what we're doing and care a lot. And so we really just don't want to see that go away because it is a special place to work and it's and it's it's special to serve the people the way we do. Len Simich is the Chief Executive Officer of Southwest Transit. I'm so glad you you brought us up to speed on what this is all about. Well great. Thanks, Len. Thanks. Thank you much. Thank you. All right. I'm Nancy Nelson. I've said this before and I mean it every time I say it. It's so nice to be able to share this time here on Democratic Visions with you. I like to think we're all in this together. We're friends, we are comrades, we care about what's happening, and thank goodness we're willing to take some action to see to it that the right things do happen. Democratic Visions is handcrafted by volunteers through DFL Senate District 48, Eden Prairie, and Minnetonka. Sharon Boreen, Chair.